This is a short video about field data collection. In this case, we're using an iPad running Fulcrum's software and a BadElf GNSS receiver. By pairing a GPS or GNSS receiver with your iOS or Android mobile device, you can take advantage of the GPS accuracy of the receiver and the data collection capabilities of your mobile device. Fulcrum has a web interface that you can use to build data collection applications and also to review and edit your data. We'll start by looking at the web interface of a simple hydrant data collection application, and then we'll use that same application to do some field data collection. So what we're looking at here is the designer portion of Fulcrum's web interface for the app that I've built for hydrant data collection. What you see on the left-hand side are the basic kinds of fields that you can use, and on the right-hand side you can see the configured app that I've already created under layout. Uh, each of these different fields uh, are essentially drag and drop. As you'll see here, I'm going to add in a date field, which simply involves me grabbing the date field from the left, dragging it to the location in the application that I want it to be in, and then configuring it with a label and a description. You'll notice there are a variety of different kinds of fields that are available, text, numeric, yes, no, dates, single and multiple choice, fields, fields that will do calculations. You can also use the design fields uh, to organize your application. You'll notice I have several sections here, one for day field data, one for general data, and so on. By clicking on the pre-configured fields that you've created, you can edit them and verify that the information you're using is correct. So for here, for example, I've got hydrant size with a couple of different uh, size options. I noticed I didn't put in a description for serial numbers, so I'm going back and filling that in. Under type, I've got three options. I'm making this a required field because I want to make sure that data gets collected in the field. You can also preview an application that you've built via the web interface by clicking on the preview app button. That will show you the basic layout uh, that a mobile user will see in terms of the order that fields are going to be listed in and whether they will be visible or not. For example, you could create an application and hide the office data because that won't be actually used in the field. Obviously, anytime you make changes to your applications, do not forget to save. So let's use this app to go actually collect some data. So I've got my GNSS receiver here, which I've placed on top of the hydrant. And what you're seeing now is a screen capture of the data collection process from the iPad itself. So I'm picking a hydrant type. I'm picking a manufacturer off a pre-configured list. Same goes with the size. In this case, my hydrant does not have a serial number. I'm skipping that. It does have an isolation valve. It's a single color. You notice those red asterisks indicate that the fields are mandatory. Uh, pictures are very, very important. Always take those. In this case, I've actually taken a picture of the GNSS receiver as well. Before I save the record, I check my location. One of the nice things you can do with this is actually modify the place of your record using the base map. There's actually an Android interface for this I mentioned. This is essentially the same uh, data collection application, but uh, you'll see that the, the layout of the interface is slightly different because of the different operating systems. That being said, the list of information is exactly the same. Uh, it's just laid out a little bit differently. And in this case, we're changing the field data status to complete. So once you sync your data with the cloud from your mobile device, all of that information that you collected will be available on the web interface. And anything that's been added to the web interface since the last time you synced will now be available on your mobile device. So we're going to view some of the records that we've collected. These uh, little 
pink dots uh, represent hydrants uh, that we've collected in and around the UNM campus area. I have a, a couple of options in terms of how to look at them. I can look at uh, just the data. I can look at a combination of the data and the map. I can also filter each of these uh, various conditions. So for example, if I just want to see my Mueller hydrants, I can click on that and it will reduce the list of those. And if I go back to my map and look at them, the only thing that will be shown are the Mueller hydrants. You'll notice I have a somewhat busy base map back here. I'm going to change that for ease of use to a simple street map, kind of like a Google map, which clears away some of the clutter and makes the points a little bit more visible. So you can see a few of them scattered around. I'm looking at records that are in this field. Uh, there are about 31 total. Uh, it's showing me the records below that it can see in the map. So if I zoom out on my map, you'll see the records below get populated to, sh to reference everything that's currently in the visual frame of the map. I can do a quick view of the data related to any record, uh, which will essentially give me a short form layout with all of the information. I can also click on the picture and it will bring me to a more detailed picture relating to the image itself, which not only shows me the picture, but where I took it and some metadata about the image. Now, obviously, once the information's up there, I'll probably want to download that. I've got a lot of options, CSV, Excel, Esri shapefiles. Uh, I can download either the filtered or the unfiltered data from here. I can also download this information from the main app page where we started out by simply going to the exporter. The advantage I have here is that I can download multiple uh, files from a lot of different apps that I have created. 